Irish washerwoman, perhaps one of the most hackneyed and loved jigs in Irish music. It's not 100% clear where the tune originated, the writer is unknown, and the earliest records go back to the early 1800s, when this tune appeared in collections both in Scotland and Ireland almost at the same time. Like all great tunes that endure over many years and centuries, in fact, it's a very simple tune. It stands up on its own, as does any great Irish jig, and perhaps just the association with Irish or Hollywood Ireland over the years means that the Irish washerwoman, perhaps to trad aficionados, might not be the most palatable tune to play. But it's still a great piece of music, and it's still well loved. So we're going to learn it. Simple tune, and then we're going to add in ornamentation, some chords and variations, and ultimately show that even the most simple tunes can be played in very interesting and very pleasing ways, both for the player and perhaps for the listener too. As it's a very simple tune, it's lovely to play on the Irish mandolin. This one uh, made by Dave Shapiro uh, here in Ireland. I've had it for quite a long time. And this is what we call the flat iron or the paddle Irish mandolin. Let's learn the basic melody of the tune. Going to keep it really simple, nice and slow so that you can pick it up. It's in the key of G. There's nothing complicated. So here's the simple version of the Irish washerwoman. It's definitely worth noting in the second part that holding on your fingers on the frets as long as possible just to create as much sustain through the instrument involves a little bit of left hand trickery. And I'll show you the piece I mean now. So we want to keep that high G note, that's fret 3 on the E string, on for the entirety of that last section. And then we're going to use our fourth finger on the high D on fret 5. And then because we want to play fret 3 on the A string and the G string, or the E string rather, so that's the G note and the C, C natural, we're going to use our index finger and our third finger at the same time. You, you can bridge it, but then you're talking about jumping off and you're not really gonna hold the sustain. So you're just using your index. And I, I think because the fret size on the mandolin is a little bit smaller, that feels a lot easier on the banjo because there's just more room to move around. So with this, it's just a little bit cramped. Well, it is for my fingers anyway. So it's just that move and keeping that G note on the entire time helps with the sustain. And think about that all the way through the tune. How long can you keep your fingers on the fretboard to keep notes sustained?
jigging is as normal, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, suffices perfectly for jigs, but you can always do down, up, down, up, down, up if you wish. The emphasis to bring out the jig rhythm, of course, is just to bring down a little bit more force on the first note of each bar. Let's add in some simple ornamentation. Remember with jigs that you can play them one, one, two, three, or one, two, three, one. That is the emphasis. It's where the triplet falls in relation to the first note of the bar. And I have a full video done on this. I think it's the Black Frog where we just talk about how to create a whole load of different styles using ornamentation and where to place the triplets. Remember that with mandolin, we're going to play the very clean triplets. The stuttered or dampened triplets that we use on the banjo, the they kind of make the mandolin sound a little muddy overall. So I tend to use very clean triplets on the mandolin and pressing down and just holding that sustain through each of the, uh, each of the triplets. So here goes, our Irish washwoman with simple ornamentation. All of this, of course, is fully notated and transcribed in Tab, Stave and ABCs on Patreon. And this tune works perfectly well for banjo with the very same fingering, the very same ornamentation as it does on the mandolin. I'm going to play one round of the tune now and I'm going to use chords and harmony. It's in the key of G, so you're going to have the chords of G, C and D. I'm going to leave out all, if not almost all, of the ornamentation just to give you a flavour of playing the tune very simply but trying to harmonize yourself as you play the melody. Let's add in a little bit more ornamentation. This time I'm going to add in variations, ornamentation, chords, and try and bring a little bit of stylistic interpretation to what is essentially a very simple tune.
So there you have it, the Irish washerwoman. I've also created a couple of play along tracks at varying BPM so that you can practice playing at a slower speed, add in your ornamentation, and then try it at session speed. Jump in, just do it. Eventually your body is going to adapt to the higher speeds if you push it, but you gotta know the tune first. You gotta have decent technique. And that's what this is all about. Teaching you how to do the ornamentation, pick hold, jig rhythm, taking simple, beautiful tunes and making them into interesting pieces of music. Hope I did that with this. The Irish Washerwoman on Irish Mandolin. Again, all of this is notated, PDFs, printable options, stave, tabs, the works. It's all available on Patreon. I use a website called Sound Slice, which is the very best music teaching tool on the internet. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button so that other people can see this kind of content 